Hi, good morning, happy Friday, happy Women's Day. Thanks for joining me. I'm Jen Singer, the founder of The Event Industry, a online um, platform and community for event planners. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Uh, every Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standards Time, I go live and talk about an event planning subject and then answer any questions that you might have. So today we are going to talk about something I truly love, um, event decor and rentals. When you think about event planning, you naturally think of like all the creative elements and all the pretty things and floral and linen and cool lounges and all that stuff. And while that's definitely like a big part of the event planning process, um, it's like a small fraction of it as we've we've kind of seen in the last couple of weeks um, talking about logistics stuff or AV or the venue. Um, the decor is definitely a huge part of it and something I truly love to utilize my creativity and those skills, but um, it's a fraction of it. So anyhow, I'm glad that we get to talk about it today, um, but before we do so, I just want to recap the last few weeks we've been talking about um, 10 categories to simplify your event. I've created these 10 categories to help me um, just break down the elements of the event so I can simplify it uh, when it relates to different tasks, um, elements to just make sure I don't miss, and um, just help you execute a really flawless event. Um, I'm going to recap those categories uh, just for everybody's um, information, and then if you are like, what is she, what is she talking about? What are these categories? Where do I find this information and what is this checklist? So if you go to the eventindustry.com, that's the T H E, can't spell it, eh? Um, the eventindustry.com, uh, the freebies, uh, links to the freebies are on the homepage or they also live under the tools page. Um, there's a tools tab at the top so you can access the freebies on there. Um, also, there's the videos from previous Facebook Live, so if you want to catch up, um, there are some other video resources there to, to peruse. Um, so to go over the categories again, we have uh, audiovisual, entertainment, uh, budget and financials, decor and rentals, food and beverage, guest lists, um, logistics, PR and marketing, photography, and the venue. In the last few weeks, we've already gone over the budget and financials, the guest list, the venue, which we went into depth with a couple weeks ago. And then last week, we talked about um, audio, visual, and entertainment because they're so intertwined. And um, we talked about all of the things to consider as it relates to the lighting, um, your electrical needs, sound systems. Um, screens, all those elements that would be covered by an AV company um, that may be provided by the venue or you may need to contract out with a different company. And then we also talked about um, um, some different elements related to entertainment and you know, best practices for managing entertainers, whether that's a live band or a DJ or what have you. So just some, some things to consider as you're procuring entertainment and then you're managing them um, up and in, in, through the event. Um, if you, like I said, if you weren't able to join us last week or the last couple of weeks, you can catch all those videos on Facebook Live or they also live on the eventindustry.com. Okay, before we jump into decor rentals today, there has been this quote that I've seen all over social media as it pertains to event planners, and I thought it's brilliant, and I just wanted to share it with you in case you haven't seen it kind of a million times like I did. But, okay, so it basically defines event planners, and it says, someone who does precision guesswork <laughs> based on unreliable data from those who can't make up their mind. See also wizard or magician. And I think that's so true. Um, doing the work that we do can be incredibly difficult because there are a lot of unknown variables or you have people that you're working with that um, have a hard time making decisions about all the different variables. So um, it, it really is some, somewhat challenging um, to 
to uh, manage all of those things. And um, but yet I still love it. And I think there are jobs out there that are um, that are also equally hard. Um, but this is just um, a really a lot of fun. Um, okay, so. I'm excited to share with you some steps to break down how you assess the theme or the decor need um, for your actual event. I broke it down into five things you should be asking yourself um, when you start planning your event. And you're thinking about, okay, what was my theme going to be? And then what's, if my theme's going to be this, like, what am I going to need? You know, what kind of centerpieces would I have? What kind of linen? What's the color scheme? What's the whole guest experience? What are menu items I'm going to choose? Um, all of those come into place, but before you like <laughs> go down a rabbit hole of Pinterest, which I completely do all the time, you have to sit, consider some, some key factors that will help guide you in making those decisions because, um, all these elements that I'm going to go over play a huge factor in like what's possible. And I love to live in Pinterest land and dream up amazing decor experiences that hopefully someday will happen, but may not be the best um, the best option for the client that I'm working with currently um, because of many factors. But okay, so here's number one. What is the event purpose? Um, so, you know, is it a wedding? Is it a corporate thing? Um, is it casual? Is it supposed to be more business oriented? Is it a fundraising gala? So it needs to, you know, be really exciting. Um, these people are paying a lot of money for a ticket or they're sponsoring a table. All of these elements can play like a huge factor into basically the experience that you're designing and the decor and the rentals that you, you procure really help support that. So number one, just think about what is the function and the purpose of the event um, for your client or for you that you're hosting. Okay, number two, what is your budget? <laughs> so uh, you can have these grand ideas and, um, and really if it's a fundraiser, it, you're limited. You might need to do a lot of stuff yourself. Um, because there's just not um, the money in there for an actual florist. So that is something to, to really consider. Um, the third element is um, who is your audience? Like what is the guest experience that you're um, hoping to gain for them? So who, who's attending and you know, what kind of, what are their expectations? Is it, are they really a more casual group and do you need to take that in consideration? So your audience and what would be the most comfortable for them is definitely a consideration. Number four, what is the venue? Now, the reason why this plays like a big factor is that um, you just don't want something that's totally conflicted. Um, and the example that I think might might be helpful is that if you have um, you're at a venue that's very like rustic chic, um, and you have a rustic chic wedding or um, fun fun gala, like that would totally complement each other. Or like there's lots of hotels here in San Diego that are super beachy because we're by the beach. Um, but if you wanted to bring in modern stuff or something that's very thematic, um, sometimes you have to really go over the top um, to overcompensate for like the decor that's already kind of the experience there, whether it's the carpeting or the floor or the the, the linen that's included that's kind of the color scheme um so definitely take that in consideration as like your venue can um if it's not such a blank canvas can work against you in the respect that you would just like need to overcompensate um to really showcase the theme so it made sense um so when people walked in they're like oh um you know madman theme um or old oh, hollywood theme like they were like oh this totally makes sense um, but you need to kind of consider that when you're thinking about the elements in place already at the venue. And then the fifth thing is the time of year. So you just don't want to do like a beach theme, um, event as fun and, you know, cute as that could be, or like fun decor, um, in January when it's raining. I, you know, and maybe, maybe people the opposite effect are like, 
yeah, I would love to go to Hawaii or Mexico right now and not be in this rainy, cold weather. So thinking about the time of the year can definitely be something that you want to consider for um, for the theme of your, your event, um, especially when you're in, you know, more of the extremes of the, of the seasons, whether it's really warm and you want to do a winter wonderland um, versus like really cold and it, you, something beachy. So just to recap, the things to consider is one, the purpose of your event. Two, what is your budget? Three, who is your audience? Who's going to be attending the event and what is the kind of experience that they would love to, to uh, you know, enjoy, maybe dress up for? Um, that's definitely something to, uh, to consider. And also, what is the venue, number four? And number five, what is the time of year? Okay, um, so I hope all that made sense and it could be definitely helpful as you're creating um, maybe Pinterest boards or mood boards um, or thinking about theme elements um, for, for your event. And that's definitely something I will go into in another Facebook Live will kind of um, describe how you kind of put these mood boards together and what are some of the elements because if you're presenting something to a client, you definitely want to put something together that's very straightforward and easy to digest of like, okay, this is old Hollywood because you're doing, you know, this for a signature drink or these are the color schemes or these are the different kind of fabrics or the different metals or this is the kind of um, linen that I would get or these are the kind of floral arrangements. Um, this is the kind of entertainment. Um, putting all of those elements like into a mood board, into a presentation, so it's really cohesive um, when you present it, and therefore they go like, oh my God, that's amazing, yes, let's do that. Or they go, I don't really get it, or meh, we don't really like that. Um, you know, not that you didn't put together a good presentation, maybe it just doesn't speak to them. Um, and that kind of goes back to my point um, about number three, about your audience. So sometimes it could be really well presented, but it just doesn't speak to their, to their interest. Um, or maybe something else speaks to their interest. So that's something definitely to consider. Okay. So last week I mentioned that I was working on a old Hollywood theme gala for a client with my, um, event planning business, Jen Singer events. And I'm really excited to share the photos they're gorgeous. Um, the event was fantastic. It was so exciting to kind of see all of those elements in the planning of like 10 months from when I did create the mood boards for them. I did present to them a couple of different ideas and they went with the old Hollywood and it was just exciting to, to dream up something that actually like came into fruition and they had a wonderful time and they danced and, um, it was pretty amazing. So I shared the, um, the photos on the Facebook page. So if you get a chance to kind of look at them, but I also thought I would go into kind of some of the elements that we incorporated it to like support that Holly old Hollywood element. Um, one sec. So one of the things we started with is the color scheme. And what we chose was red, black, white, and gold really felt like those colors um, would help exemplify um, the theme and the, the rentals that we chose and the linen and um, some of the floral arrangements. So we, we stuck with that color scheme and we incorporated a lot of velvet, <laughs> like a lot. Um, the step and repeat was this big red velvet drape. Um, we had Oh, you probably are wondering like, okay, what's a step and repeat? So I'll, let me quickly define that. Um, a step and repeat can be like a big banner um, that has sponsor logos on it and like a backdrop. So when people arrive at the event and um, they're walking up, they can have their pictures taken in front of it. And so sometimes it's a banner with sponsor logos or sometimes it's just like a de decorative background. Um... I mean, I've seen things at like um, on on Pinterest um, for Dior where they um, have these models like handing champagne like through these hedges, um, and people are walking up, and it's basically their entrance to the event. They have this photo, they grab the champagne. It's you know they like it's pretty amazing. Um, so step and repeat can be the backdrop banner, but then it also could be the um, 
um, just something really decorative that's like a photography experience when people arrive. And so um, for this event, the guests were arriving. We did a champagne arrival, um, which was great because it A, went with a the theme, and, and B, it's just a nice way to, for something as big as this event, it was close to 500 people, you get a drink in everybody's hand, and it just helps... Um, um, cut down on the lines for the bars if you are just passing out champagne and um, putting putting that drink um, in their hand right away. So they um, we did the tray pass champagne and then red carpet and then there was this big um, big step and repeat backdrop of this um, red velvet um, uh, with really decorative flowers and these candelabras and um a really cute like display that people got um or set up and we had their their photos taken um we also used vintage decor uh, vintage lounge furniture um old hollywood like memorabilia um stuff like old cameras and uh, film reels um lots of old books too and just made this um these different bookcases and the centerpieces in the lounge area and the cocktail reception um very vintagey and super super cute um we had this big um um what's it called big ottoman like velvet ottoman with a um a large display of like feathers going everywhere that was like a huge signature piece when people walked in we also had a photo booth and so there was this like old hollywood backdrop um that was like the hollywood hills and then like a ton of really fun um hollywood like props and stuff like the megaphone and the hollywood markers and um and, like a mini oscar that was really cute so people had a ton of fun with the with the photo booth props. And then we also did some stuff with the food and beverage. Like we didn't go crazy. Um, it's, sometimes with these big events, like it's hard to, like what does old Hollywood mean sort of element. And you also want to create food that's approachable too. So we did like a shrimp cocktail, which was kind of reminiscent of that era. And then these like mini beef Wellington bites that were tray passed. And then we also did a signature cocktail that was like a prohibition, um, like signature cocktails. So those were some, some fun elements that weren't like a, a huge lift and not a, a very approachable. Um, so I definitely would consider that too, as you're relating to the theme is make sure those elements like, you know, are not just thematic, just for thematic. Um, but they also guests will enjoy them too. Cause that's a big thing. Cause you don't want to spend money on the food if people are just totally turned off to the food and beverage. Um, so that was, that was a ton of fun. Um, um, okay. So <laughs> two freebies, um, two tips that I want to mention, um, that can definitely save you time and money, um, as it pertains to event planning. One of them is when you're working with rental companies, any rental companies, um, always ask for an event planning discount. They will nine times out of nine, give you a discount. Um, I've never had any rental company not give me a discount. So, um, always ask for the event, event, event planning discount. I had, I go ahead and pass that, that savings on to my clients. It's usually around 10%, which, which can totally add up, especially if you have like a big event. Um, and then the second thing, second tip, as it relates to decor and themes and all the stuff we're talking about today, one suggestion, um, I wanted to put forth is if, if you're having a tough time, like even thinking about the five elements that we went over earlier, you know, like what is this theme that's really going to work with this event? Um, the, the big, the best solution I could put forth is to go with, um, something related to the cuisine. So do a taco party, um, brunch with rosé all day. Uh, that's, I mean, who could go wrong with that? Um, so there's so many elements related to cuisine or Italian dinner, or Indian, um, that you can just build off of that and, and have it be, you know, as, you know, as, as elaborate or as subtle as you want it to be, um, but you've themed it out enough where it's cohesive, it's decorative, and it's fun, and you you know don't don't have to go too too crazy with it. So, anyhow, I hope that's helpful um, as it as you're planning your next event. Um, you know, thinking about what what is um, what is going to be the way to come up with a theme. Um, so, 
Just to recap, what are the things to consider for your event? It's the type of event, what's the purpose of it? Um, your budget, um, the audience that you're serving, uh, what is the venue, and what is the time of year? So I hope that all was helpful. Okay, now I'm gonna open it up for questions, but let me just get queued up here because my computer fell asleep. It was tired of me talking today. And um, if you have any questions related to event planning, whether it's about decor or, or AV or logistics, um, I would be more than happy to, to answer any questions that you might have. All right, let me see here. I don't see any questions unless it's super, super delayed. Um, but I do want to thank you for tuning in today. Um, and every Friday at 10 a.m., um, I go live. Um, this is the Event Industry Facebook Live. Um, if you would like to access any of the tools and the tips that I mentioned, go to the eventindustry.com. Again, that's the eventindustry.com. Um, I will be back next Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks again for tuning in.